Shin Godzilla or Godzilla Resurgence or Shin Gojira. It's a Godzilla movie and it has a lot of titles and I saw it, nevertheless. It's one of those. I'm going to go with Shin Godzilla because that's what's on IMDb. This is the 29th Toho Godzilla film. Can you believe that? That's kind of crazy. It's not like he's James Bond or anything. Godzilla can't talk. He can't have a conversation with somebody. He's just a fire-breathing monster. This is the 29th one! That's nuts! It's the first Japanese Godzilla in 12 years since Godzilla Final Wars. I'm a big fan of the fire-breathing monster. I love this guy. I have my entire life. I grew up with the original. Of course, it was the American edited version with Raymond Burr included called Godzilla King of Monsters. I, of course, enjoyed the 1998 Matthew Broderick Godzilla until I was old enough to realize how terrible it is. And for whatever reason, my favorite when I was a kid was always King Kong versus Godzilla. Don't ask me why, because it's really bad. But I loved that shit when I was a kid. So naturally, I was really pumped for this movie because I feel like this character's been a part of my entire life. Funimation, thanks to them, there was a theatrical run, limited, so I got to see it in theaters tonight with English subtitles, the original Japanese language. And this film's about a monster called Godzilla that climbs out of the sea and begins to wreak havoc in Japan. And a bunch of people try to figure out how to take care of this problem. So it's pretty much the exact same as all the other Godzilla films. This is a soft reboot. It's basically the original Japanese film taking place in today. So we have kids talking about Godzilla on Twitter and on YouTube, and we have the political people who are going through these tweets looking for information maybe they don't get because people are on the ground taking photos of Godzilla, that kind of stuff. And it's basically the exact same film as the original one from the 50s, except it's a little more fun and lighthearted. Now this could also be looked at as a sort of tongue-in-cheek political satire of the way the Japanese government works, or a commentary on post-earthquake Japan, but a lot of that is not going to factor in for most people who don't live in Japan, and it's not going to do much for the storytelling unless you're aware of these things and you see the connections. So what do they get right about this movie? First off, Godzilla. He is so fucking cool in this movie. He looks badass, and his appearances are worth the weight. He's got this really cool orange glow to him, and he can just wreak some serious havoc on Japan, and his sequences are awesome. I loved him in this movie. Godzilla delivered. It was also cool to hear some of the original musical cues from back in the day that were reused in this film, as well as some new music that was also really good. As far as new things go, there are two things I could pinpoint in this movie, one being an incredibly chilling and very effective final shot that I loved. And the other is that Godzilla doesn't immediately appear as Godzilla. He kind of metamorphosizes, and at first I was like, what the fuck is that thing? And I was like, I don't know if I feel this right now, but once you see him start to grow and change and become the Godzilla we all know and love, it reminded me of Dragon Ball Z. There's actually a part where somebody's like, Godzilla is only in his fourth form. And I was like, wow, he's Frieza. Godzilla's Frieza now. So Godzilla delivered in this movie, no doubt, and that's what people are going to go to this movie to see. For me personally, I also appreciate things like a good story and characters, people I can care about, something that allows me to get into the film, a narrative, a storyline that I can appreciate, maybe some dramatic depth. Yeah, that's not in this movie. <laughs> if you've ever seen a single Japanese Godzilla film, they are basically, at least the solo ones anyway, all about Godzilla, he appears, and then a bunch of people have a lot of board meetings, a lot of political discussions, a lot of back and forth about what to do and how to take care of this problem. Do we send in the military? Oh shit, that didn't work. Let's nuke him. You know, they're all the same. Every solo Godzilla movie is the same. Let's face it. Hardcore fans of Godzilla, I'm with you. But... They're all the same. Come on, guys. And this movie's no different. It doesn't really take any chances. And I really was disappointed in the humans in this movie. There isn't a single character. I actually tried to sit down and pinpoint characterization that was given to anybody, and I found one finally after thinking about it. The young girl in this film, she wants to be president one day. And that's about it, honestly. Everyone else is just a talking head that is trying to figure out how to kill Godzilla. Now, I can see that working in a film that has a better story or one that we haven't seen before, where it's just characters constantly trying to figure out how to deal with the situation. It's really fast-paced. This film is not fast-paced, though, to me anyway, because there is a humongous overabundance of characters. And these characters aren't really characters. I hesitate to even call them that. They're just, as I said 
talking heads. The Godzilla scenes are awesome and really fun, but I wish the story had some more going for it with the characters, somebody I could care about. Just throw one of the characters on street level with Godzilla. Have him just be like with Godzilla in a scene, not always in an underground bunker boardroom somewhere. One guy does look up once and go, oh, that's what he looks like. Cuts away to Godzilla once at nighttime and uh, he walks away and that's it. I was like, hmm. My biggest gripe with this movie is technically a nitpick, but if you are in Japan watching this film and you speak the Japanese language and there's no English subtitles, you're going to see a lot of characters being introduced. Every place that you cut to, you get text telling us where it is. And not just like, here's a boat in the middle of the ocean. Like, if they show different parts of Tokyo, they're like, this part of Tokyo, sub-district. This part of Tokyo, underground division, and stuff like that. Every person that walks onto screen gets a name imprinted. Now, if you're in Japan watching that, as I said, you get one white burnt-in text in Japanese characters. That could maybe be tolerable, but in America, not only do you get that white burnt-in character text, you get yellow English text telling us what those words say overlaid over the white text, and the English subtitles from the people who are speaking. So sometimes 75% of the screen is filled with text. It's kind of annoying, actually, and they, they use it so much. They really do, like every character. And there's like a hundred characters that come on screen in this movie and it's like, here's the defense secretary of this. This woman works for this place. I'm like, I don't need to know all this. It's a lazy form of storytelling. Rather than finding more creative ways to let us know about these characters, everyone who comes on screen, they just throw some text in front of us. Those are my biggest gripes with Shin Godzilla. As someone who grew up with this character, I loved seeing him wreak havoc. The special effects were actually pretty good for a Japanese live action film. It's directed by the man behind Neon Genesis Evon Angelion and Gunbuster. It was really cool to see someone from anime take on something like this. And overall, he added some really, really impressive visuals to Godzilla. He felt humongous. There were some beautiful aerial shots, some very chilling moments in which Godzilla just lays waste to things. And I enjoyed that aspect of this movie. And I think that fans of the Japanese Godzilla films in particular will also really like this film, especially since most of those people didn't really enjoy the Gareth Edwards Godzilla. So they'll probably go to this and be satisfied. But there is a lot of political babbling and talking and really boring cardboard cutout characters. And that was a disappointment to me. I'm going to give Shin Godzilla a B minus. It does what it should, despite the fact that it is sort of a very unimaginative soft reboot that we have seen before, I was okay with it because it's Godzilla. I don't like seeing him tear ass through a city. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. This film is still gonna be in a limited theatrical run for a while, so if you wanna check it out in theaters, you can probably find it near you. Also, I wanna let you know that my sponsorship with Audible is still going on. If you go to audible.com slash Chris, you can get a free 30-day trial from an amazing selection of hundreds of thousands of audiobooks. I personally love that they have all the Star Wars books on this website. That's big for me because I love them. And if you go to audible.com slash Chris, as I said, you get that free 30-day trial and you can choose from so many different things to put on your MP3 player, your tablet, and you can read books on the go. And it's very convenient for people who don't always have the time to sit down and read. So please, do check out audible.com slash Chris for that free 30-day trial. And thank you very much to Audible for continuing to sponsor my videos. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.